The 2024 Team USA roster is absolutely loaded with a diverse range of players. You've got the old and experienced guys, the young up-and-comers, the bucket getters, the lockdown defenders, the guys that can do a little bit of everything, you get the point. But with these different mixtures of talents, there's one thing that all these players have in common, and that's the fact that they're all considered some of the most elite, talented, and most dominant players the NBA currently has to offer. But this got me thinking, what did each of their paths to the NBA look like to get to this point? And have they always been this dominant against their competition? Well, with these questions in mind, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at every player on this 2024 Team USA roster and analyze just how good they were all the way back in high school, college, and coming into the NBA. Were they all highly recruited studs from the start, or did some have to really overcome the odds and prove some doubters wrong to earn the spotlight that they currently have? If you enjoy this type of content and want to see more, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more sports content. Now without further ado, let's dive into this Team USA roster. Kicking things off for Team USA, we've got the elite two-way big man, Bam Adebayo. Bam was a five-star recruit in the class of 2016, the number two power forward in his class, and the fifth overall player in the country. He played his high school ball at High Point Christian Academy, where he put up averages of 18 points and 13 rebounds a game in his senior season. Additionally, he was named North Carolina's Mr. Basketball alongside being named a McDonald's All-American. It goes without saying, he was an absolute force in high school with a very impressive physical frame. I mean, you can tell just by looking at the highlights, he was simply a man amongst boys out there. On the recruiting front, he held several notable offers from schools like North Carolina and Kansas, however he'd wind up committing to the University of Kentucky and rounding out their stacked recruiting class which also included De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk. The big man would go on to have a very solid freshman season for the Wildcats, averaging 13 points and 8 rebounds a game while being named second team All-SEC, and this would be good enough to make him a top prospect for the 2017 draft, where he'd go on to be selected with the 14th pick by the Miami Heat. And since coming to the NBA, Bam has vastly improved each and every season, becoming one of the most versatile and well-rounded big men in the NBA. He's racked up three all-star selections so far and is a four-time member of the NBA's all-defensive team. So overall, Bam has been a stud at every level of basketball he's played at, and his versatility and interior presence certainly provides a lot of value to Team USA. Up next, we go from the front court to the back court with one of basketball's most well-rounded scorers, Devin Booker. Book was a part of the 2014 high school class where he was rated as a five-star recruit, the number three shooting guard, and number 18 player in the entire country. In his senior season at Moss Point High School, he averaged a very impressive 30 points a game, going on to be named a McDonald's All-American. For recruiting, Booker had several big-name colleges vying for his services. However, he'd eventually narrow down his choices to Kentucky, Michigan State, Missouri, and Michigan, taking an official visit to each one. However, like the previously discussed Bam Adebayo, Booker would eventually sign with the University of Kentucky. For his freshman season, he'd be a part of a loaded Wildcats team, which featured several future NBA players, and as such, Booker would actually come off the bench as the team's sixth man. And he'd go on to be very effective in that role, averaging double-digit points on highly efficient shooting percentages. His play would earn him SEC Sixth Man of the Year, and he'd also be named Second Team All-SEC. He'd go on to declare for the 2015 NBA Draft after his lone collegiate season, and with his immense offensive potential, he was viewed as a mid-first round talent, and that's exactly where he'd end up going, being selected by the Phoenix Suns with the 13th pick. And since entering the NBA, Booker has developed into one of the most polished and skilled scorers in the NBA, capable of getting buckets from anywhere on the court. These last few seasons in particular, he's really managed to step up his game, averaging over 27 points a game while being named to several All-NBA and All-Star teams. Essentially, ever since high school, Booker has been viewed as an elite offensive talent, and he's been able to translate that scoring to college, as well as the NBA, and he provides Team USA with yet another elite offensive player in the rotation, as he looks to add a second Olympic gold medal to his list of accolades. From one bucket getter to another, up next is the greatest shooter of all time, Stephen Curry, who despite being the highly skilled and decorated player that we know now, some might be surprised to learn that he actually wasn't highly recruited coming out of high school. Unlike the previous two guys who were 5-star recruits, Curry was only rated as a 3-star in the 2006 class, alongside being the 32nd ranked point guard and the 147th overall player in the country. During his time at Charlotte Christian High School, he'd lead his team to three straight conference titles, while of course being an absolute marksman from the three-point line. However, his skinny 160-pound frame led to many concerns regarding his durability and how he'd hold up at the collegiate level. So despite all his production and success in high school, he didn't have many colleges recruiting him. Most of the schools to offer him 
him were smaller Virginia schools like VCU and William and Mary. However, he'd eventually decide to sign with Davidson College, a small school located in North Carolina. And it was at Davidson where Curry took the college basketball world by storm, averaging 25 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists per game in his 3 seasons there. And his elite shooting ability created several electrifying highlights as he was able to thrust himself into the national spotlight after several strong performances in the NCAA tournament. And after declaring for the 2009 draft, Curry would be selected 7th overall by the Golden State Warriors. And I'm sure most of us know the story from here, as he's gone on to become the greatest shooter of all time and one of the best players the NBA has ever seen. He's a 2-time MVP, 4-time champion, 10-time All-Star, and is largely credited for evolving the game of basketball to what it is now. From a scrawny under-recruited player in high school to becoming an NBA legend and one of the main faces of Team USA basketball, his story is certainly an inspiring one. With Steph being a highly under-recruited player, we now move to the other end of the spectrum with the big man Anthony Davis, who was ranked as the number one player in the class of 2011. Funnily enough, Davis actually started his high school career as a guard, but would see massive growth spurts over the next couple years, eventually growing into a 6'10", 200-pound frame by his senior season. And in his senior year at Perspective's charter school, Davis averaged a ridiculous 32 points, 22 rebounds, and 7 blocks a game, going on to be named a McDonald's All-American and Illinois' Mr. Basketball. And after signing with the University of Kentucky, he'd go on to have one of the greatest freshman seasons in the history of college basketball, averaging 14 points, 10 rebounds, and over 4 blocks a game while being named the National College Player of the Year. After his dominant freshman season, Davis would be selected first overall in the draft by the New Orleans Hornets. And after joining Team USA for their 2012 Olympics gold medal run, Davis would go on to the NBA where he has continued his domination, developing into one of the best two-way players in the NBA. There have certainly been tons of injury concerns over the years, as joked about by many NBA fans, but at the end of the day, his accolades speak for themselves. Being an NBA champion, 9-time All-Star, as well as being a part of several All-NBA and All-Defensive teams. He's been absolutely dominant at every level he's played at, going from the number one high schooler, to number one college player, to being the number one pick in the NBA draft. And that domination is certainly continuing on the international stage as he looks to bring in his second Olympic gold medal. Now we move on to the guy who's slowly building a resume for being arguably the greatest Team USA player of all time, and that's the Slim Reaper, Kevin Durant. Like most of the other guys mentioned so far, KD was one of the top players in his respective class, being rated as a 5-star recruit and ranking as the number 2 overall player and number 1 small forward in the class of 2006. He'd play his senior season at Montrose Christian High School, where he put up a well-rounded stat line of 23 points, 10 rebounds, 3 steals, and 2 blocks a game, going on to be named McDonald's All-American. Following his senior season, Durant is actually on record saying he would have declared for the NBA draft right out of high school if he could, and he likely would have still been a top pick. However, with the newly implemented one-and-done rule, he'd have to play at least one season in college. And after considering schools like Duke, Kentucky, Louisville, and taking official visits to UConn and North Carolina, he'd eventually lock in his commitment to the University of Texas. And in his freshman season for the Longhorns, he was easily the most impressive freshman in the country and one of the best players, period, putting up averages of 25 points and 11 rebounds while displaying his elite three-level scoring ability. And after bringing home the title of National College Player of the Year, Durant would go on to declare for the NBA draft and be selected with the second overall pick by the Seattle Supersonics. And he's another one of those guys whose body of work speaks for itself, being one of the most skilled and talented scorers the game's ever seen. He's a four-time scoring champion, a former league MVP, 14-time All-Star, and of course, a two-time NBA champion. And although the legitimacy of some of his accolades are frequently called into question by his critics, there's no denying that KD is one of the most talented and skilled players the NBA has ever seen. He's simply been dominant at every level he's played at, and even being on a star-studded Team USA roster, he's easily been the most consistent so far at these Olympics. And if he manages to bring home a fourth gold medal, a real argument can be made for him being the greatest Team USA basketball player of all time. Moving on now to one of the brightest young stars in the NBA, we've got the always entertaining Anthony Edwards, who in the 2019 class was rated as a 5-star recruit, the number 1 shooting guard, and the number 4 overall player. He played his high school ball at Holy Spirit High School and had an absolute highlight reel of his senior year, averaging 29 points and 9 rebounds a game, being named a McDonald's All-American. Now, it was obvious Edwards pretty much had an NBA-level frame and play style by the end of high school so he was viewed as a likely one-and-done prospect. It was just a question of where he was going to go for that one year of college. And after a tight recruiting battle between the Blue Bloods and other top colleges, Edwards would make the surprising move to sign with the University of Georgia, a school with a historically middle-of-the-road basketball program. But according to Edwards, Georgia coach Tom Crean played a major part in his decision, as he had previously coached guys like Dwayne Wade and Victor Oladipo, two of his favorite players. And in his freshman year in college, Georgia once again proved to be a pretty average team, however, Edwards 
Edwards would flourish as the team's star player, averaging 19 points and 5 rebounds a game. And after declaring for the draft, Edwards was viewed as a consensus top prospect in the class. And although there were some concerns regarding his shot selection and defense, scouts thought he had superstar potential and as such would be drafted first overall by the Minnesota Timberwolves. And fortunately for the Timberwolves, he's developed into that superstar player scouts thought he could be. He's one of the most skilled and entertaining players currently in the NBA, and he certainly has the potential to be a top 5 player in the league one day. He's a guy that's been built for the NBA since high school, and for Team USA, he brings a sense of aura and confidence that the rest of the team clearly feeds off of. And hopefully, bringing home a gold medal in Paris will be the first of many accolades for the young star. Up next is definitely one of the more controversial players on Team USA for reasons I'm not going to get into, but I'm of course talking about the big man Joel Embiid. His basketball history is actually quite interesting as the Cameroonian born Embiid didn't even start playing basketball until he was 15 years old. But after being taken under the wing by fellow Cameroonian Luke Mba Amute, who saw his potential, he moved to the US to pursue a professional career. And in just a short couple of years in high school, by his senior year, Embiid was averaging 13 points and 9 rebounds at the Rock School and was rated as a 5-star recruit, the number 1 center, and number 6 overall player in the class. And after signing with the University of Kansas, Embiid would continue to develop his game and would have a very solid freshman season averaging 11 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 blocks a game. And despite dealing with some injuries the latter part of his freshman year, he'd still declare for the NBA draft where he was viewed as a top prospect. He was still seen as a bit raw in certain areas, but with his fast development to that point, combined with his imposing 7-foot, 250-pound frame, his potential was off the charts. The Philadelphia 76ers would take him with the third pick in the draft, and he's since become one of the best and most productive centers in the NBA. He's had his fair share of injuries over the years, but when he is on the court, it's hard to look past his monster stat the last few seasons, averaging well over 30 points per game. So far, he's racked up an MVP award, 7 All-Star selections, and has been on several All-NBA and All-Defensive teams. And although he's had a pretty rough Olympics so far, and has been getting scrutinized by NBA fans more and more as of late, It can't be denied that his journey to the NBA has been crazy, going from not even playing basketball until 15 years old to being the MVP of the NBA and a member of Team USA. For the next Team USA player, we've got another young upcoming star in Tyrese Halliburton, who, believe it or not, wasn't a highly recruited player coming out of high school. In the 2020 class, Tyrese was rated as a 3-star recruit and the number 51 ranked point guard even after a productive senior season at Oshkosh North High School in which he averaged 22 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals a game. Now, he did have some decent offers from schools like Iowa State, Nebraska, and Minnesota. However, he never quite got the big-time offers he was looking for. Eventually, he'd signed with the Iowa State Cyclones, and after a freshman season in which he flashed lots of potential, he came back for a huge sophomore season, averaging 15 points, 6 assists, assists, 5 rebounds, and 2 steals a game. And after this strong showing, he'd shoot up draft boards, being projected as a potential lottery pick. And after declaring for the draft, he'd be selected 12th overall by the Sacramento Kings. And after some solid seasons there, he'd be shipped out to the Indiana Pacers, where he's since blossomed into a star player. He's one of the best facilitators in the league, averaging over 10 assists per game the last two seasons. But he's also one of the more efficient players as well, shooting around 48% from the field and 40% from 3 for his career on high volume. While I still think he has some room to grow as a scorer, overall the Pacers made a great move trading for him, as he's looking like a player they can build around for the foreseeable future. And while he's not getting much playing time for this current Team USA squad, I think if he continues to improve, he'll have an opportunity to play a more featured role in the 2028 Olympics if he decides to play again. Now moving on to a guy who's always been one of the more underrated guys in the NBA, Celtics guard Drew Holiday. Drew was a part of the class of 2008 where he was rated as a 5-star recruit, the number 2 point guard, and number 4 overall player in the class. In his senior season at Campbell Hall High School, he put up a well-rounded stat line of 25 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 steals a game, leading his squad to a state title. He'd go on to bring home Gatorade National Player of the Year honors while also being named a McDonald's All-American. In terms of recruiting, he's only listed as having two offers, them being UCLA and Washington. I'm sure he probably had more considering he was a 5-star recruit, but nonetheless, he'd go on to sign with the UCLA Bruins, teaming up with another future NBA player in Darren Collison, and the two made up one of the best backcourts in the country. Holiday put up a solid freshman season with averages of 8 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists, going on to declare for the NBA draft at the conclusion of his freshman season. And although his college production wasn't off the charts, he still had plenty of NBA tools, skill sets, and 
and potential, and thus would go on to be drafted with the 17th pick by the Philadelphia 76ers. And throughout his NBA career, he's always been one of the most underrated players in the league, just having a really solid all-around game as a scorer, facilitator, defender, and leader. Fortunately, in recent years, he has started to get some more recognition, making several all-defensive and all-star teams, but I think one of his more under-recognized accolades is him being a three-time recipient of the Twyman Stokes Teammate of the Year Award. I think it's just a big testament to his character and leadership, and why he's played such a vital role in the two championship teams he's been a part of. Overall, Drew is the definition of a good teammate and winner, which are two intangibles that make him a very valuable player for Team USA and whatever NBA team he's on. Up next is a guy who does not need an introduction, the man considered by many to be the greatest player in NBA history, LeBron James. Now, many NBA fans are already aware of LeBron's high school legacy, cause it truly is the stuff of legends. Like, I ain't even trying to glaze, it's just facts. He was probably the most hyped high school athlete of all time, regardless of sport, literally nicknamed the chosen one, had a bunch of his games broadcasted on primetime TV, was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, I'm sure you get the point. In his final season at St. Vincent St. Mary, he put up averages of 30 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals a game, and was considered the consensus number one prospect for the upcoming NBA draft. As such, LeBron Ron would skip college and be drafted first overall by the Cleveland Cavaliers right out of high school. And I'm not going to waste a lot of time talking about his NBA career, his resume speaks for itself, 4 championships, 4 MVPs, holder of numerous records, yada yada yada. And he's of course a big part of Team USA's history, with this being his 4th Olympics. And with his leadership and experience, he's surely to play a major role for the team as they make a push for another gold medal. Getting near the end now, we've got another Boston Celtic with star forward Jason Tatum. He follows the same pattern as most of the other guys mentioned so far, being a highly rated recruit in the class of 2016, ranking as the number 2 small forward and number 3 overall player in the class. In his senior year at Chaminade College Prep, Tatum displayed a very polished NBA skill set, averaging 29 points and 9 rebounds a game, going on to be named a McDonald's All-American. As you'd expect, he was pursued by all the top schools in the country, but he was pretty much locked in on Duke the entire time, which is where he'd eventually play his college ball. And after dealing with some early injuries, he'd return and make an immediate impact for the Blue Devils, averaging 16 points, 7 rebounds, as well as a steal and a block per game, while continuing to develop his already very polished offensive game. And his production and skill set would make him a top prospect in the 2017 draft, where he'd be selected with the third pick by the Boston Celtics. And during his time in Boston, he's developed into one of the best scorers and overall players in the entire NBA, racking up five All-Star selections, making four All-NBA teams, alongside an NBA championship this most recent season. His career is certainly looking very bright as he's now entering his prime, and for the 2024 Team USA squad, he's got a chance to earn a second gold medal to add to his growing resume. And now, finishing off with the guy who set easily one of the craziest paths to the NBA I've ever seen, we've got Derek White. Now, his story has actually been getting quite a bit of recognition recently, and for good reason, because it is pretty crazy. White played his high school ball at Legend High School, a brand new school located in Colorado. And I do mean brand new. Derek was a part of the school's first ever graduating class. But even with the school being brand new, he was still able to ball out, and by his senior season was averaging 17 points, 3 assists, and 2 steals a game. Now, moving into the recruiting side, of things is where the story really starts to get crazy, because saying Derek White was under-recruited might actually be a bit generous. Like this man basically wasn't even recruited at all. Zero stars, doesn't even have a profile on most recruiting sites, and zero offers from any D1, D2, or D3 programs. Literally the only thing resembling an offer he had was from Johnson & Wales University, a small NAIA school known more for its culinary program than basketball. But fortunately for White, the school's head basketball coach would accept a head coaching position at the Division II school. University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, and upon doing so, offered White a small stipend to play there, which he obviously accepted. And he took full advantage of this opportunity, going on to play three years for the program and breaking virtually every record the school had. And after his success at the D2 level, he'd finally get his opportunity at the Division I level, deciding to transfer to Colorado for his final season. And he proved he belonged, averaging a strong 18 points, 4 assists, and 4 rebounds a game. His strong play would be good enough to get him onto NBA radars, and White would go on to be selected 29th overall by the San Antonio Spurs. And after balling out with the Spurs, he'd be traded to the Celtics where he's since been able to develop into one of the most versatile and efficient players in the NBA. Just the definition of a do-it-all player that gives full effort every minute he's on the floor, which has resulted in two old defensive selections as well as playing a big role in the Celtics 2024 championship run. Just an absolute crazy story of resilience and never giving up on your dreams, going from zero college offers to being a real difference maker both in the NBA as well as on the international stage for Team USA. 
So that was every player on this current Team USA roster as a high school recruit and their overall path to the NBA. As you'd probably expect, most of them proved to be dominant players at every level they've played at, which has allowed them to earn the highly coveted opportunity to play on Team USA. However, it's also cool to see a few players that weren't highly recruited or have had not so glamorous paths to the NBA, as it shows that basically anyone can make their hoop dreams come true if they have the passion and determination. Be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to the channel for more sports content. If you have any thoughts on this Team USA squad or have any video suggestions you'd like to see, be sure to leave a comment down below. This is HCP signing off. As always, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm out. Peace.